praise the Lord. This is uh, Dave Aaron and my wife Tabitha Aaron, and we're just here to tell you what the Lord's done today. Uh, some powerful experiences today on a Saturday afternoon. Uh, so, Tabby, you start and just share what's on your heart. Okay. Um, a few days ago, uh, Dave told me about how a sister named Carolyn. Matthew, Sister Carolyn Matthews Carolyn from Matthews. Inside Out Training and Equipping. Yeah. Who trains with Cheryl Fritz. How she prayed for him and he had experienced gold dust um, in his hand and he was showing me the pictures and telling me the story about it. And um, I was curious about it. I wanted, I told him, I said, when I come home from work that day, I wanted us to pray because, you know, I was open. I wanted to experience whatever the Lord had for me and had for us and you know just to be totally transparent because I'm not somebody that you know sugarcoats things or lies or you know hides things and but for years I never really like got into all that and neither did Dave I mean we just weren't sure how we felt about it I really was adamantly like I didn't believe in anything like that for a very long time but um when we had taken a class at our church fire church last year with Steve Lappin, Steve Lappin, excuse me, um, it was a prophecy class, um, what was the book? You May All Prophesy by Stephen Thompson. Yeah, and that class just forever changed me, um, and kudos to you Steve if you see this video, um, it was just one of my most favorite studies ever, and Steve had started talking to us in the class about our imagination and how God gave us our imagination and he just really shed a lot of light on different things for me personally and I started realizing that you know the Lord could use those things and he gave us those things for a reason and um, so I started to get hungry like for things more things like the supernatural with the Lord and then of course with um, Bill Johnson's book um, you know about a, a supernatural mind things like that I can't remember the full title, but we had looked at some of his books, and then of course just teaching at our own church and and worship and things, you know, being so amazing and just getting closer to the Lord. Um, this past year has been really hard for me personally. Um, things with my family back home, being sick and just different things. Um, I've had a lot of ups and downs, and and uh, had to grow a lot, you know. Just the Lord was working on me and changing me, so I was. Um, just really hungry for change, really hungry for um, just going further with the Lord, you know. So anyway, getting back to Dave, what happened with Dave, um, he told me about this, and he showed me the picture, and I know my husband is not a man to lie, and I know he doesn't make up things, or, you know, he's not a, what some people might say, a false prophet or whatever. I've been with this man for 30 years, I know his heart, he knows mine. And um, we have both together and individually experienced a lot of supernatural things throughout our years with the Lord, but this was something new for us. I mean, we've known about it for years, we just never experienced it. So I had thought about it all day at work, and I was kind of like, you know, a little kid waiting to get home to open a present. And it didn't, um, I think we prayed or something, but nothing really happened. But we didn't give up, and he had talked to Sister Carol about Carolyn. Oh, Carolyn I'm sorry sure. sister Carolyn uh, I apologize Carolyn um, about praying for me and she had messaged us back and we had did that today this morning and she spent quite a bit of time with us on the phone just talking fellowshipping praying um, and so basically when she prayed um, we had uh, this the phone you know the light on the phone so we could see really well if anything mm -hmm. happened and David and I both at the same time in my hands, we saw like um, very tiny like specks, if you will. You could almost miss it, but they were so like bright and and gold and just just mm. such glitter. And this wasn't like you know mylar or plastic, like Dave was saying, like you know something like you could cut up and and drop in your hand. I mean, this was actually in my skin. And we started to see it form just very little, very faint, but it was truly like strong gold and, and glittery. And, and Sister Carolyn had explained before she even prayed, she said, it, when it comes on you, it's, it's, um, it's not always like you can touch it and move it around. It it's, can even be like it's a part of your skin. 
well that's how it was coming on my hand and it was almost if we weren't paying attention we could have missed it but we had several lights going so we could make sure we saw it really well and um, I began to move my hands around and it was in the palms of my hands um, just you know not a whole whole lot but just enough where we could see it and um, it was very real I mean you saw it right mm -hmm. so and it was just like it was a part of me and it was really pretty it was beautiful and it just what little I saw and it was more than you know one piece I don't know how many but it was there and it was real and it really happened and for me to see that and to experience that after all my years of being skeptical and you know I used to wonder why and I used to say things like you know well, what's the purpose or I don't see it actually in the Bible I mean I was very adamant and I've always been adamant I'm, I'm a true seeker you know of the word the truth I like things to be backed up in the Word of God, but um, through the years I've learned that um, I've heard my husband say, I've heard Dr. Michael Brown, the founder of our school, you know, in his messages I've heard him say, you know, things that, you know, sometimes things aren't always, you know, verbatim right out in the scripture, but yet, you know, it's like, it's like there. I don't want to add to his words. He could say it much better than I could, but, you know, it's like it's, like it's the heart, it's the Father's heart, you know. And um, so anyway, I don't want to take a lot of time, but, you know, just to say that, um, you know, it was this was an amazing experience. So, um, Sister Carolyn had said something while she was praying for me to, to receive it that really touched my heart, and it was like it was meant for me to hear. And she was talking about, and I, I personally never heard anybody say it this way. Now, some people may have, but I had never heard them say it this way. She was saying something about, um, that in the temple, you know, of God, that, you know, I guess back in like Old Testament times and things, that there was a lot of gold and, and, and things like that, um, and it was beautiful, you know, and, and there was gold in the temple, and she was saying how we were the temple of God, and that we were filled up with all those same things on the inside of us, we were filled up with the gold and then the glory, and, and, you know, just how, how she worded it was just really beautiful, and it really touched my heart and made me, you know, finally understand this whole thing with what people call gold dust. Um, and because when it when it happened on my hands, and I've had oil come on my hands, on my left hand, many years ago. So I had an experience with that. I won't go into that now. But um, that really affected me in a positive way as well. But when this gold started appearing, like I said, it seemed like it was a part of my skin. And she like called it forth like out of our pores and that's how it was and it was like with what she said and how it was happening like it was actually a part of me it wasn't just something laying in my hand it was really beautiful so um, I'll let my husband talk about it as well in a minute but I just wanted to say from there we decided when we were finished later in the day talking with her we went to get a little bite to eat and we were trying to decide where to go because um, we were kind of limited to our with our transportation. We've been having problems with our car So we decided on a little place up the street and we visited there and When we were there we um, I put some little music on my cell phone and we were sitting talking waiting on our food and We had our hands on we were like not holding hands But I told my husband and I put my hands out on the table I said put your hands on my hands and you know, we were just um we and he did that he said my hands felt warm and I said well we can believe for for the Lord to manifest right now or you know experience him right now you know I was excited about the gold and not that I was seeking a sign or going after that but it just got me excited that we were both ex going through this experience and I was like you know the Lord's here and and he can manifest however he wants to and we can experience him right here in this restaurant and Dave was like amen you know so we kept our hands on each other's hands for a little bit until our food was ready and about that time two gentlemen walked in and basically I waited for them to get done our meal we were done our meal and the whole time I was drawn to this one gentleman and at the end of before when we were finished before we left um, they were near the end of their meal I didn't want to disturb them I walked over because um, the Lord had shown me in my heart that this man had a diagnosis and he um, it wasn't a positive diagnosis but that it was something that kind of left him with no hope and the doctors weren't able to do much about it and I believed it had to do with his back 
and I believed that he was in pain. So I went over and um, introduced myself, and I said I didn't mean to disturb him. And I proceeded to tell him what the Lord had showed me. And um, I just told him, I said, I'm a Christian, and you know I felt drawn to come over and talk to you. And I told him what the Lord had told me about him. And he, he just looked at me, and his eyes got, like, really big for a second. And he smiled, and he says, how do you know this about me, you know? And I smiled back, and I said, well, sir, that's... That's God. That's the Lord. I said, He wants you to know how much He loves you today. That's why He sent me over, because He knows you're in pain. And He wants you to know that He knows that, and He loves you, and He wants to heal you. You know, He wants to work in your life. And He just sat there and just stared at me like He was just, I don't want to say in disbelief, but He was in awe and wonder. Like, you know, and I said, my husband and I uh, ministered on the street. I told him, that my husband came out to that very strip mall we were at and he took his welcome mat out and he would go out and pray for people and things and I said we go out on the streets and pray for people or whoever you know for healing or whatever they need and we minister to people I said could we please pray for you and he said yes absolutely so he got up and I, my husband was there but I brought him over and introduced him uh, the man's name was Marlo and um, he's not from around this area where we live. He was from Texas and a truck driver. Yeah. And so anyway, um, Dave prayed, and, and I'll let him explain uh, mm. in a minute, but he he uh, he said he felt better. You know, we prayed twice, and Dave explained about praying twice and how um, Jesus had to pray for the blind man twice because he said he saw men like trees, and Jesus prayed a second time. So... Um, he was touched, he, and he was more so touched in his heart, I think, than anything. And he asked where, um, he offered to buy us food or whatever we wanted. We were like, no, we were fine. And um, he was just so grateful. So um, at the end, I noticed that um, the man asked us where we went to temple, where we worship. And he used the word temple. And I picked up on that, and I just thought that was really unique because he was basically asking where we go to church, you know, of course. And, and but he used the word temple, and I just thought that was pretty cool that he said that word. And Sister Carolyn was using that word earlier when she prayed for us and prayed for us about us. I'm sorry, about us being the temple, um, you know, of the Lord. So um, I thought all that was pretty awesome, and how it all happened, and just the Lord showed up because we put we were sitting there waiting on our food, and we were just excited about the things of God, and we put our hands together and. We were just waiting for the Lord to show up, and He did, and it was pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah and uh, the day before, uh, right when I was leaving work, I started getting really bad pain right around my belt in the back, on the right side of my back, lower part of my back, where your belt goes around. And uh, I was telling Tabby about it, and I thought I had injured something. I thought maybe it might have been a world knowledge pain, but this was like really severe. But it kept like pulsing and it lasted with me all night long actually like woke me up and I kept having a sharp pain and um, a lot of times when anyone have a word of knowledge pain it's just like a like a tapping like a poking and it's like a pain at a certain spot but this was like something I almost felt like or an injury like and I was rebuking it you know as I normally do if I feel like it's from the enemy or whatever I just any kind of pain that's trying to attach to me I just cast it down in the name of Jesus and uh, but this this lasted with me so um all, even today, most of the day, until we met up with these two men at Hong Kong Chinese restaurant. And um, when we went in there, uh, you know, Tabby got the word of knowledge for this man, Marlo. And um, when we prayed for him, he, I asked him where his pain was in his back. And he, I said it was upper or lower, and he said in the lower part of his back. So he, he had my hand put it right at the same spot where I was having that pain at. It was the lower right-hand corner of your back. And, um, and I prayed for him, you know, twice. And the pain left him, and you know, Tabby said, uh, I, I couldn't see what was going on in the front because I was behind him, but she said his face looked shocked, and I could feel the power. He like jolt, yeah, jerked, like he like jerked back. He was feeling the power of God, I was feeling the power of God going him. And the first prayer, he felt some of the pain leave. The second prayer, I think he pretty much said, uh, it was all gone. And uh, and so when I got, and it was pretty, it was pretty funny because we're in this Chinese restaurant, and there's like these three Chinamen, you know, inside, and they're like watching this whole thing going on, you know, wondering what's going on, and, um, it was, it was pretty funny, but, uh, 
Oh, uh, yeah, we got back home, and we were talking about it, and I was, we were just resting, and uh, I was on the bed, and I just, the pain was totally gone, you know, from me, so I was like, I put two and two together, it hit me, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> got the revelation that that was a word of knowledge pain, and then Tabby got the word of knowledge as well for this man, and, um, you know, that's, that's what's so awesome about being, me and Tabitha are both, you know, two is one, we're a married couple, and we're also called in a ministry, and God used us together as a team, and can do the same for you, you know, a ministry should never be split up, you know, uh, like she has her ministry, I have my ministry, unless it's really God's calling for that to happen, but sometimes when that happens, it, it's like, it's not good, because, you know, the, the wife is so consumed with her ministry, the husband's so consumed with his ministry, and it's, it's split, and they never get to see each other, and it really messes up the marriage, and sometimes wrecks the marriage, you know, we've seen that, so, um, but, you know, Tabitha and I, um, notice, and we're going to do this more, because she's been wanting to do it more, and she works, and I work, and, uh, she keeps saying, when am I going out with you, I'm like, well, whenever you want to, and we want to get together and go out more, you know, and so, uh, excited about the welcome mat, um, I want to thank, this Christian couple on Facebook who chose to remain anonymous, but um, they're a very loving Christian couple, and I put a post up about this new welcome mat that I was excited about that you can actually on this website uh, personalize a welcome mat. And so, you know, my slogan for the welcome mat is what the Holy Spirit gave me was welcome to the kingdom of God. When he gave me the idea over 10 years ago or so back at a Walmart, when he gave me the idea about the welcome mat and have people stand on it when they get saved or now even get healed, I am to say to them, we're welcoming you to the kingdom of God when they don't understand it. You know, so that's our slogan, welcome to the kingdom of God. And so uh, I found this company and I was looking back on my Facebook and I actually didn't realize, but I found this website over a year ago and um, you can actually design it on their website. So I chose the color red and it's really fancy looking and it's bigger than what i thought it's bigger than the welcome mat that tabitha originally bought for me um and tabby's the one who was led of the lord to buy me the welcome mat the first one which i'm still going to use we're going to use both of them together and share them out equally but um i really want to thank the couple the loving couple that sent it to us and um, yeah, thank you very much thank you very much and it's really yeah. long i mean it's like two or three people can stand on this thing <laughs> <laughs> and it's really big. It says, "Well, <laughs> it says, welcome to the kingdom of God." And um, you want to unbox can, it? yeah, I can unbox it. This is the box that came in. I'll hit you in the face. But, um, <laughs> yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> it's probably backwards on the camera, but it's the company's personalization mall dot com, and you can get a welcome mat design if you choose to. You know. I encourage, we encourage people to go out and do the same thing because this is a spirit, this is a spirit God, spirit of God idea. This was the Holy Spirit gave it to me, but you know, it's from God. It's, you know, I give all glory to God. I'm not jealous. I'm not envious of people going out doing the same thing. I encourage you to. No, we think it's awesome. You know, awesome. we think it's awesome. You know, so, um, <laughs> get this This out. was not planned. <laughs> yeah. And, um. We're going to have to take a picture and put it on the end of the video. <laughs> you can't bring it down. That's how huge it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can you see it? Not really. <laughs> so it says, welcome to the kingdom of God. <laughs> it's really big. Let me uh, stand behind your head. <laughs> that might be a good idea. Let me bring it down. Can you all see that? I'm going to scroll it across. Welcome to the kingdom of God. <laughs> but anyway, that it's is all awesome. Backwards. And it's really big. Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, What's it's it beautiful. It's about as long as I am tall, and I'm 5'3". <laughs> and it's nice thick, like, rubber on the bottom, and... The, the front has like a wood grain. Yeah, it's, it's made like, to look like a piece of wood. Like a stained wood, like red stained wood grain. So that's really cool. We didn't even know that until we really got it. And um, when you think about it, you know, the cross, you know, is wood. 
and there was the blood of Jesus on it, so that's, that makes it even more special because I just thought it was just going to be red. But it's yeah. actually got a wood grain on it, so that is yeah. really awesome. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for this blessing. And um, did not ex expect it. The couple you know, sent us a personal email on Facebook Messenger and told us that they were going to buy this for us. And um, they even gave us some extra money to cover it all. And with the extra money, we're giving it to uh, missionaries at Fire Church where we belong. So um, praise God. Amen. You going to come back here. around here and join me? Yeah. Welcome and uh, <laughs> and also, uh, it came in like a couple days, didn't it? I mean, that yeah, was amazing was how fast, fast that they made this thing. It was like two days, and it was in the mail, and it was at our door. I was thinking it was going to be a week or two weeks at least, but uh, I was yeah, amazed. Yeah, because it's custom made. It's custom with made the with the slogan. With the slogan on it. Yeah, and um, it's very fast. Uh, so, and that just to me, I'm. I don't think of things as coincidences. It never, you know. I mean, it's like I know that God is behind it all, and He wants us to use this right away. Yeah. And so uh, we couldn't use it today because it's been a rainy day. It's just not. It's kind of nasty out the weather. So um, I always wait for a, a nice sunny day out, or at least cloudy and not raining. Um, but we're we're really excited about this mat and both mats really. Um, I want to share that real quick. Is like you know, uh, along with the. The vision that God gave us, and this is our theme, I mean, honestly, with, with our ministry, this is something the Holy Spirit gave us, you know. Um, I'm friends with, me and Tabitha both are friends with Tom and I have a fisher, and around the same time I, you know, started going out with Tom, and he was doing a Carver Box church, you know, he, he uh, thought it was a great idea about the welcome mat, and he started putting the welcome mat in front of the Carver Box church, he's like, Dave, can I, you, when I told him about the idea that God, Holy Spirit gave me at Walmart, he got excited. I was in his truck. And he was like, hey, can I use this? I'll put it in front of Carver Box Church. I was like, yeah, sure, Tom. Like I said before, I, I was excited. I was so happy that he wanted to use it, you know, because um, I, I just think it's awesome. I think it's awesome. Anybody would use it. And just like he, you know, Tom Fisher um, and Hava, you know, they also did a Carver Box Church training and equipping in Charlotte, North Carolina. That was mm -hmm. there for that um, in Freedom Park in Charlotte. And Tom was encouraging other people to do and make Carver Box churches. We want to see this happen because it is spirit-led. It's a spirit idea, a Holy Spirit idea, and it, we are to share it. You know, we are to disciple people. And and it, when it, something like this, when people are getting healed and delivered and set free and saved, born again, you know, when God uses ministry like that, that's an awesome thing. We want to see it to grow. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, uh, so God, uh, Tabby brought out this piece of paper. We keep a lot of stuff um, in storage and, you know, um, th special things I keep in a briefcase through the years that are special to me, stuff that from the Brownsville Revival when we went and visited there and other things from David Wilkerson um, would send me in the mail, you know, uh, Times Square pulpit, ser pulpit series uh, pamphlets that had sermons. I, I got a lot of them. I've held on to them. And I just keep stuff in my briefcase. And anyway, she dug up this little drawing that I totally forgot about that goes along with the welcome mat. And um, she goes, you remember this? I was like, oh, wow. And it was something I drew. And anyway, um, I remember... That's what inspired me to get the welcome mat for him to begin with because I found it in his briefcase. And it was like, I knew it wasn't forgotten in his heart, but... He had had it for many years, several years yeah, or more. Sat on the and idea. I was like, I need, the Lord was like, you need to get this now, you know? Yeah. And that's how it all started. So she hands me a piece of paper draw, drawing that I drew years ago around the same time I got the idea for the welcome mat. And um, it was it was actually like a progression. It was even more. Uh, so like the vision was, and I drew it down, was to have a wooden cross built up and have about seven welcome mats in line in front of the cross. And then behind that, have like, if you ever been to a movie theater and inside they have like those velvet red ropes with the poles, I wanted to have two of those, one on each side, very narrow, and with a gate in the front. And what the gate was inspired by the movie Pilgrim's Progress, where the guy that's 
pilgrim. Um, he comes across the evangelist, and in, in the movie, the evangelist tells him, uh, "Where are you going to?" And he says, "I'm I'm going to find a way." Uh, you know, he, he was escaping uh, the city of destruction, and the evangelist says to him, uh, "He says, but I don't know how to get to you know to uh, to be saved to get rid of this burden on my back." And the evangelist points the way, and he says, "You see that light right through there?" He goes, uh, "Go to there. You'll find a gate called Straight." And you know that's what Jesus says: "Straight, straight is the gate. Narrow is narrow is the way. Straight is the way. Narrow is the way which leads to life." So I had this idea about having a gate and calling it Straight, and just where you open up that gate, and people and do this out on the street, you know, and people will walk through the gate and walk through the straight narrow path. With velvet ropes because they're red and they when they want to get saved or they want to get healed or wherever they want to get baptized and Holy Spirit they can stand on each one of these mats right in front of the cross and this was something I drew out and I've yet to do yet I mean this is something else you know um, I had a vision one day uh, years ago uh, Scott Neri evangelist Scott Neri had um, the second perfect love and power conference last year and uh, some of the 420 fire leaders asked me so Dave what's your vision and I I told him about the welcome mat, and I told him about what I was just sharing with you about the mats and the cross. And I said, even bigger, I said, because your vision is supposed to be huge, right? Bigger than what you are. And they're like, yeah, that's right. Um, God gave me this vision one day. I mean, I actually saw this vision of me preaching in places like um, me and Tabby, both, of course, um, preaching like a stadium sized places, like a stadium, like a football stadium. And the end zone were, you know, touch where they have the touchdowns where you know football players they run with the ball and they score a touchdown they have the whole big end zone there the end zone would be the welcome mat would be the size of an end zone if you can imagine that and just like when billy graham would call people to the altar people would be coming down called to get saved and they stand right on that welcome mat that's the size of the end zone of a football field and so, I mean, it would be like a huge, giant welcome mat. You would probably have to roll it up and put it on a flatbed truck. That's just something that's huge. It's something bigger than me, you know. And that's something that God's put in my heart. And like Tabby was talking about earlier, about we took at Steve Lappin's class and he was teaching us about the imagination that God's given us an imagination, even from the time we're a child. And He uses the imagination to give us visions, you know, to give us dreams. And those dreams come true you know i mean um joseph had dreams you know as a boy and uh his brothers got jealous and but those dreams still came to pass they couldn't stop the dreams from happening you know and god's given you dreams god's given you visions and no devil no person no naysayer nobody can come against those dreams because god nobody can stop god's plans for your life you know if you believe if you just trust him and believe he'll see it through Amen. so um i just want to encourage you with that you know what's your favorite verse jeremiah 29 jeremiah 11. 29 11 i think it goes to chat verse 13 for i know the plans i have for you says the lord um i think it says plans of good not of evil give you a future and a hope something along something those lines like yeah that's a very has a very special meaning in my life it's one of my favorite verses yes and so uh with that, just want to say thank you all. Thank you again to that couple we can, we run, who wants to remain anonymous. And um, we thank you so much for this blessing. And we will be planning to use it and put up the videos of it. And and I say that, Lord willing, but I mean, you know, because um, we don't know if we have tomorrow, but I'm just saying, Lord willing, <laughs> we are going to go out and use it faithfully, pray over this, Matt, and um, just expect it, in 2018 just believe god is going to do some really powerful things right. with the mat um you know it's not the mat it's the holy spirit but we pray over we pray over the mat and uh just as uh you know the woman with the issue of blood you know she reached out and touched the hem of jesus garment she said that if i would just touch the hem of his garment i will be healed and that's what happened she didn't touch jesus she touched the hem of his garment but you know jesus was wearing a garment and his power is all over the garment all over him you know holy spirit's all over him and the same with the apostle paul you know he had garments on him that were taken off him and taken places where maybe he couldn't go get to 
and he laid it on people and they were healed, you know, or Peter's shadow, right. Peter's shadow, you know, and those are new things that happen, you know, I mean, um, don't worry about what the naysayers say, you know, I mean, um, God can still do new things, you know, I mean, um, the naysayers say it can only be in the Bible, but, um, you know, there, God is, God, God wrote the Bible and, you know, and God is omnipotent, he's omniscient, he is omnipresent. He's in and, everything. Yes, and um, even the Apostle Paul went to the third heaven, he, he heard things that were unlawful to speak, he probably saw things too, and there were so many things that were done that they couldn't even record it all in the Bible. It says so at the end of the Gospel of John. So not everything that was done was all written Every account could be written in the four Gospels. Do you understand that? And um, I said it would take the, the volumes of the world to, re to yeah. contain all of it, which and, is what Jesus alone did. Right, and I, and I think that even means past, present, and future, because right. Jesus is, he was before Abraham was. You know, he, says, he said to the Pharisees, before Abraham was, I am, I am. in John chapter 8. So, um, you know, praise God. So, you know... Um, don't worry about all that. I mean, people come against you. You know, you just, you just keep going. You keep pressing. You know, you spread your wings and fly. And I, that's something else I wanted to address as well. Like David's talking about, um, you know, we're all in this thing together. You know, and we can even look outside the church. We're all in this world together. We're all in this life together. And yes, granted, we might not agree with some things. You know, we know some things are wrong as to how we believe and what we believe the Word says, like things that the world participates in. But we're all in this thing together. We're all humans. You know, the Lord created all of us. We're to love one another. It's, you know, it's time for people to stop judging and hating and criticizing and love people. No, you don't have to embrace what they do or accept it or whatever, but it's time to stop this. And stop the hate. You know, there's a saying, haters going to hate. And just because you speak out and you have something you feel passionate about doesn't mean you're a hater. And that's not what I'm saying. But at the same time, we're to work together. You know, encourage each other, love each other. If you see something you think we're doing or someone else is doing that you think is off or maybe we've missed it, then just pray for us. You know? Yeah. Um, if you want to leave comments to our videos... Leave them, but guess what? We have to keep doing what the Lord tells us to do. Amen. You know, we love you just the same. We, we don't hate anyone. We're not against anyone. If you feel you led to leave your comments or feel you're correcting us or if you think we're false prophets, whatever your thoughts are about us or anybody, you know, um, just know that when you lay down at night, what you've said that day, you know, can you live with that? You know, if you feel you're okay with God and what you've said, then that's between you and the Lord. I'm not judging you for that. But pray for people. You know, it's I had to learn that. You know, when I was younger in the Lord, I used to be really adamant, like I said earlier, about my feelings and my thoughts and, oh, if it's not in the Word, you know. But, you know, we don't put anything above the Word of, of God. You know, we believe it, of course, it's 100% true. It's it's the Father's heart, it's who He is, it's His character. But at the same time, we don't want to put God in a box, and we don't want to judge those that are, you know, or condemn those, I should say, out there doing His work. Yes, we're to weigh things, see if they're of the Spirit, um, because there are things out there that we have to be careful for, you know, and people using the name of the Lord and things like that that are maybe um, other, you know, religions other than Christianity or or whatever, and that's and that's not to judge or speak against them, but we have to weigh what's right, you know, for us as believers. So we just need to be careful. Is all I'm trying to say. And again, you know, no matter what people comment or say about my husband or about either one of us, um, we have to live with ourselves, and we have to be the ones that know at the end of the day we did what the Lord told us to do, and we're accountable mm. to Him, and we're accountable to each other as husband and wife. So. We're just going to keep on keeping on. <laughs> Amen. And we um, bless you. And Jesus said, my words are spirit and life. You know, so I mean, um, that's Holy Spirit. You know, it's not just the Bible. It's We, we honor the Word of God. We do. Absolutely. You know, we feed on it. You know, the Word of God is powerful. It is. 
but it's also Jesus said my words are spirit and life you know you don't separate the two so I mean um, you can't just have word and not be out there doing and ex experiencing the supernatural God is a supernatural God and he works in a supernatural as well so it's word of God yes I mean it's the word of God when you preach it you know there's seeds being planted people hear the word of God they, they can be saved but at the same time you know, there's healings that could be as seeds as, as well. You know, I mean, Peter, um, you know, he he uh, prayed for a paralytic and a man got up. And right after that, he prayed for Tabitha, who was dead, and he raised her from the dead in Jesus' name. And, you know, um, it said that many people, many people got saved because of that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They, they Because why? Because it wasn't just a word, but it was not just a word, but... Uh, First Corinthians four twenty says, you know, not just word, but but in power and in deed, you know, it's 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 both. It's spirit and life. It's words. It's word of God and it's Holy Spirit. And you can't just be in the spirit all the time, not read the word, not honor the word. That's how you know God, you know. But um, you also know Him in the spirit. You know, um, even James told us be a, be not just a hearer only, but be a doer of the word. You know, and you can't say these gifts aren't. An operation today there's people being healed out there you know you can't say that god just shut all that up and the people aren't getting healed they are getting healed god's still in the healing business why would he rob the whole church of that and take it away it doesn't make sense you're sealing it up people that believe that way they're just locked into a denomination they've sealed it into a denomination and you know you've taken a few verses out of context you know honestly you know god didn't shut it up you know um you know, study Ephesians chapter 4, you know, uh, the fivefold ministry, the, the apostle, the prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher are for the edification building up of the church. So why would he take it away? No, he doesn't take it away until the day comes that we, the whole church, is married to Christ. We're taken up in that last day. We're, we're up in heaven with him. And there won't be any need for prophecy. There won't be any need for healing because right. nobody will be sick. You won't need yeah. words of knowledge or prophetic because we'll all be there. You understand? So, I mean, um, uh, it's it's not sealed up. I'm telling you, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm telling you, it's it's for today. We're seeing people getting healed, and it's God. You know, it's the presence of God. He's so powerful. You can know the difference between God and the enemy. You know, I mean, when the presence of God comes around you, it's beautiful, it's joy, it's love, unspeakable. The enemy's not out there with love. You know, there's no That's love. Right. In, there's no love in him. Yeah. You know, when you feel the presence of God around you, it's it's wonderful experience. It's beautiful, you know, and you know that it's him. And he always, when he does show up, he's, he's always confirming his word, you know, in you, you know. Yeah. And so, um, you know, the Holy Spirit honors Jesus. He honors the word of God. You know, it's Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Yeah. They honor each other. So, uh, you know, um, when his presence of God shows up, you know, and the gifts are, are in operation, things like that. It's we're we're always we're always out there today. You know, this band kept saying, you know, who are you? And we were saying, look, it's not us. And Tabby said the same thing to them. We both were saying to them, it's not us. It's Jesus, and we give glory to Him. And uh, sorry, our battery is getting ready we to die. We talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> so in closing, uh, we love you all. We thank you for watching. And look forward, Lord willing, for more videos from us. And uh, praise God, be praying for us. And um, please share our videos. And we do have a YouTube channel. And it is www.youtube.com backslash C, the letter C, backslash Dave Aaron. And you'll find Tabitha and myself on these videos and future videos. Please share this video on Facebook as well. And we do love you. Anything else you want to say real quick? Um, I just want to bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, invite you to open your heart to him, and like I did today, and with receiving the gold in my hands, you know, don't be afraid, the Father's not going to give you a bad gift, you know, He'll, yeah. he gives you something of love, something from his heart, so we just invite you and encourage you to open your heart to him, you're not opening your heart to man or anything, you know, carnal, you're opening your heart to the Father, and when you do that, He will reward you, and He's a faithful Father. Yeah, it's right, I mean, um, I just spoke to somebody from our church that was visiting, a young man, and he hadn't been baptized in the Holy Spirit yet, and he was kind of 
he, he talked to me and had some questions and he just said, you know, um, what if I pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit for speaking in tongues? And he was, he was nervous about something else speaking to him. And I was like, no. And right away, the Holy Spirit gave me a verse to say to this young man. I said, you know, um, Jesus said to the Pharisees, he said, you know, um, if your son asks you for a piece of bread, do you give him a stone? Or if your son asks you for an egg, do you give him a scorpion? And he says, if you being evil and know how to give your sons good gifts, how much more shall your heavenly father give you the gift of the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Him? <coughs> so I said that to the young man. I said, look, I said right there, Jesus promised that when you ask for the gift of the Holy Spirit, when you ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you're not going to get some other voice. You're not going to get words that come from somewhere else. You, it's not going to be carnal. It's not going to be from the enemy. It's going to be straight from God, Father Almighty. That's a promise of Jesus, and he, he makes sure that happens. So you don't have to fear any of that. you know. Um, and I told this young man, you know, you just pray and ask God. You ask God the Father. You ask the Lord to baptize you in the Holy Spirit, and you wait for those words to come. You speak them out of faith. So um, God bless you all. Just want to share that. And I'll thank you. And do you have anything else to say? No, we, no. Just, we just love you. We thank you. Thank you, Sister Carolyn, for praying for us today. Yes. Thank you again to the couple who sponsored the welcome mat. Um, thank you to those who do follow us and pray for us and encourage mm. us. And um, even thank you to those who don't encourage us because that encourages us to keep going. Mm. So and, we uh, love you anyway. <laughs> and thank you to Cheryl Fritz. Uh, yes. For letting us also be part of uh, Inside Out mm -hmm. Training and Equipping. Uh, we have one coming up soon in February. In the February, I'm not sure of the date right now, but it's on deliverance. We'll keep you posted. So uh, just watch, you know, we'll keep you posted. Mm -hmm. And God bless you all. We love you. Be blessed. Be blessed. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.